be live. Live and video, fantastic. Well, hello everybody, welcome to the live stream of River Horse and 14th of June 2019. Uh, as usual, I'm gonna talk you quickly through the, through the newsletter and basically everything that is up and new uh, the, this week. And then I cannot wait to show you this, because it just arrived, the real thing. But <clears throat> yes, let's not get ahead of ourselves. And of course, again, if you have any questions, fire them in the, in the, in the comments and uh, the staff here will, will, will shout them to me and I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to answer them. Right, so without much further ado, let's go into the newsletter. This week, we start by focusing on Ben Milton. Uh, ben Milton is the author of our uh, night, or the vast majority of the content of our uh, uh, Labyrinth adventure game. So he's written 90 scenes out of 100, so basically he's written pretty much the book, he's the author that uh, wrote our RPG. He is the, uh, I would say, the, the most famous RPG writer we engage with. Uh, he works uh, quite, uh, quite a lot in on the OSR uh, kind of community, but basically uh, the old school role play, uh, they, they do a lot of campaigns and, and adventures, etc. based on uh, kind of a traditional approach to RPG and, uh, and I mean, he, he, he's a name in there, you go there, have a look at his stuff, he's done like uh, Maze Rats, uh, you know, very cool stuff, so I'm, we're really, really happy that he's, he joined us in this adventure and uh, I mean, he, he said he's really, really enjoyed it, there's a little little bit of the information on him on the, on the website and uh, some of his some of his comments on uh, on working on the labyrinth RPG. Like all of us, he enjoyed it with his kids, watched them together, had a lot of fun together, which is the spirit really of uh, of all of this, all of this nice handsome handsome adventure. So, if you want to find out more about the author of the of the of the labyrinth adventure game, go on our on our website there. Uh, after that, we, considering that uh, we are very close, tomorrow is the anniversary again of the, of the Battle of Waterloo, it seemed like appropriate to uh, basically do another feature on, on, our, on our war game. We made, uh, in 2015, so in the bicentenary of the, of the battle, we published a war game, uh, war game, war game, a board game that I have written myself. And so I wrote now some designer's notes uh, about doing that. Uh, it was a, an interesting process. It took a lot of research and a lot of reading, a lot of trying and balancing. Uh, but you know, the, the outcome was a, I am told, <laughs> an enjoyable quick game that basically allows you to play the battle without spending hours and hours and hours on it. But you know, fairly fairly quick, fairly fast, uh, still strategic game. Uh, there's not many copies of it left. Uh, so, you know, if you want one, <laughs> get, get it in time before it goes, before they're all gone. Um, and these are the two product-based uh, bits on the newsletter, after which we go for the creature feature. So we, we, we feature another one of the, of the creatures that have appeared in our uh, books for, uh, for Tales of the Quester. This term is the Pine Martin, which is a very cute monster. <laughs> one, uh, similar to the tim Timber Wolves kind of thing. Timber wolves uh, are timber and wolves. Uh, wolves made of wood. Pine Martin, you will look a bit. It's a bit like Martin, but made of pine. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, you have to look at a picture to understand. Um, and after that, there is a fantastic comic that I think we'll get in trouble for. <laughs> totally, totally appropriate, I'm sure. Uh, celebrating Waterloo again. Uh, and, uh, and basically making the point of the historical accuracy of, uh, of the research that I made during the, 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 the planning and the designing of the Waterloo game. And uh, of course, Kaba, the little Ari hippo, uh, is, um, is helping me here. There. Um, and and in, last but not least, of course, there's a fantastic, fantastic piece of, uh, uh, of content that's been made by you out there. So thank you very much for that. Is basically a, <laughs> a Highlander themed uh, piece of feedback about uh, a group that created a uh, basically they, they do a go out they go out and reenact uh, fighting and teaching and training with swords in, in the countryside and they decided to do a mix of real live you know uh, hacking and slashing and actually in the evening uh, they got all together and played Highlander. And they really enjoyed it. They did a review. There's some videos, so, so please go and check there. The, the material is really, is really funky. It's really, really exciting to see. So once again, thank you for that. And 
After that, there is obviously just some more add on our upcoming things like the Ogus and Oubliette for Tales of Equestria, the Jim Henson Labyrinth Adventure game, and more importantly, now because I really can't wait to show you this, it's here, so I think we are ready to go and um, I'm allowed to show you that. So I've been holding here in front of me, I suppose if the camera behind me can <laughs> zoom on, we have the Hunger Games. Walking J. And this beast of a game, I mean, if you can tell, it is pretty big. <laughs> it's um, very large in this size, very big. So it's a big game. And I'll provide, proceed to do some, well, not a proper unboxing, but just an excited, hey, look at the thing that just arrived kind of video. So I, there's a elegant, solid lid comes out, this protects your miniatures, and in it I can position it so that you can see, and basically what we have is the cards, the dice, the main miniatures, so this is the your Air Force, your hovercraft, and these are the heroes in 25mm uh, scale, and then bags of troopers on 15mm scale, 10-15mm scale, so we have quite a few of them, like I'll try to show you in more detail what you get in there. Let's begin, let's leave the heroes last because they're the most exciting. So beginning with the cards, you have two types of cards. You have the larger cards, I'll show you some here in the close camera. Like obviously the Katniss Everdeen card, which shows Katniss. And anyhow, all the heroes you would recognize from the movie. And not only the heroes, but also the villains. So these are your hero cards. And the, of course, the capital have their own heroes as well. Then you have cards for the uh, control of the various districts and missions and the actions. So there's, there's quite a lot of action and mission cards. And then the district these these cards that are either resistance sided or capital sided and they show who basically controls the district and what the district produces when you control it so these go actually on the map more on the map later because it's a big map dice so our polyhedral transparent dice here quite a few of them and then speaking of troops, you have your resistance soldiers, sorry, these are peacekeepers, so the capital soldiers. I don't know if the camera will be able to pick up these if I bring one there. Because these are small scale, <laughs> 15 mil, yeah, probably struggling to focus on that. Yeah. Yeah. And resistance soldiers. So this is a bit of a you know, vast amount of troops that you have on the, on the field. The resistance fighters and also a little surprise for the for the resistance is the the mutts which are these mutated monstrosities that the capital can unleash on you there you go so we looked at the 15 mils but now let's get stuck into the bigger miniatures the heroes and the aircraft i mean i'll show you just one for the sake of argument one of the overcrafts which both sides have, so they both sides have an, an air force. One is District 13 and the other one is the Capitals. And now let's get stuck into the heroes. I mean, I probably we don't have time to show all of them, but I'll do my best. So let's begin with her, of course. The Piste de Resistance, Stephen Waterloo style. So that we have Katniss Everdeen, which I think is a very, very fine, very elegant miniature. I mean, the, the line is so refined, so minute. Try, try sticking your hand under it. I'll put my hand under it, as suggested. Does that help with the focus? Mm, you tell me. <laughs> Can't quite see the screen. Doesn't appear to have. Uh, what I can do. Well, I'm sure we can do spinatures yeah. <laughs> and better pictures of these. Because <laughs> our camera. So if I remove that. I think it's interesting to see, if possible, the, the profile of the miniature, the elegance of it. I think that's the, I'm trying to look at the screen and to move it in a way that I can 
Yeah. So she, I mean, Gigi Terzi who sculpted them, I think, in this particular, in Katniss, captured her, her elegance. It's very, very fine. And these are 25 mil, genuine 25 mil, as, as you know, because you, uh, when you do this kind of miniatures for uh, for approval from talent in uh, from actors, you have to stick to real proportions. You cannot do the classic miniatures where you don't have to represent a real actor or a real person that then the person needs to approve it. Then you can exaggerate some features. You can exaggerate the facial features, the nose, the ears, the eyes, to make them bigger than what they would be in reality. Same for the hands, the feet. So basically, miniatures at 25 mil have a certain 30 mil. They have a certain, certain proportions which if you do that for a real actor or actress, they would never approve it. Because they would go, well, no, but my hands are huge. <laughs> so obviously these are refined and fine in proper. We have a Caesar Flickerman here. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> the art of showing the miniature without trying to make it go out of focus. Uh, we have, of course, Peter with his crossbow. Well, interest number one. <laughs> Like that? Should I stop moving it? Yes, if you stop moving it, it'll um, try and work out where the focus is. And sometimes get it wrong, like it just did. <laughs> okay, so we have... Well, okay, well, we can certainly do some uh, miniatures of these. But there are, there's all sorts of... I mean, there's the BT miniature, which is definitely different in style, because it's on his wheelchair. And the Alma Coin miniature. I'll drop her there again and see what happens with the focus. <laughs> Not to make sure I was supposed to press it. Snow has to be shown. And the likenesses are astonishingly good. I mean, I wish the focus would allow you to be able <laughs> to hold these in your hands and look at them. Um, Finnick, of course, with his trident. There he is. <laughs> He's giving up on the focus. How about that? If I hold it there? Let's try. Ooh, try to raise the camera. Let's see if that works. How about now? How about now? now. Uh, yeah, I think that's. I think it's finding the distance better now. Right, we learned a lesson. A little bit further away. Yeah? Yeah. Button. Okay. Amish. Let's see if Amish works better at that distance. Still pretty blurry. Still pretty blurry. Yeah, okay, well, I think we'll have to do better than that of showing you the miniatures under the close camera. But now let me show you instead the size, the sheer scale of this game. Because you have to imagine what well, happens when you take this beast out. These are the counters in the punch board. That's the rule book. Uh, which clearly features some nice film. Like, for example, that's a nice one. <laughs> this is a Dean. Instead of Dean. Is that? Anyway, oh, and Cressida as well. Hmm. But punch boards with counters, and let's see if I can manage to convey how giant this board is. So I have to kind of clear the <laughs> clear the deck and try to show you how big the map of district of the districts of Panem is. Uh, okay, let's put it the right way around for you. So if the camera is there. <laughs> Obviously, there's no way these all fit under the same in the same shot, but so you have cards, larger spaces for mission cards, heroes, mission cards fit in these spaces here on the district, and then you have the control cards. Obviously, this is just a random card, but there you go. So those you could be under control of one or the other, and of course, on the market, on the on the territory, you'll have also all the troops, the aircraft, the heroes. 
going from this to 13, which is the center of the resistance against the, capit the capital. Uh, so a giant map, mission code here, character card, turn track, reserves, reserves. So very useful, big map, <laughs> fantastic map. And this is, I have to say, the Hunger Games game that, uh, one of the games that, <laughs> I don't know, I suppose you could say I will always say that, but I think this is probably my favorite game, at least currently, of the ones we produced. I, I really enjoy playing it, so I'm really looking forward to actually own my own copy and just being able to just play it. You know, because when you design something, you always look at it as a piece of work, as a job, but then now and again you can just go, right, I'm gonna take this and have a bit of fun, just play the game and enjoy it. And uh, I really can't wait to be able to bring this up, bring this home and try it with my friends. So that is it of the Hunger Games. And uh, I think we are ready to say goodbye. Yes, looking at the team. Yeah. Okay, we're done, we're finished. All right, <laughs> thank you very much and I'll see you next time.